Now, Dr. Bata Adu was appointed the Minister for the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation for the new administration. Dr. Bata has come off as one who can take the ministry forward and bring in new developments that will benefit and take uh, the ministry to another level. Lots of hopes were raised as to how she would strengthen the social investment schemes. She has also been described as a hard worker and a resilient one. On the other hand, Dr. Jamil Abu Ibrahim was appointed about three days ago as the Minister for Youth by the new administration. It remains to be seen what we can expect from these ministries and those who head them are in charge at the moment. Now we'll be diving into the discussion of youth affairs and the issue of poverty alleviation and where Nigeria stands and where we could be, particularly with the new uh, persons at the helm of affairs as regards uh, these issues. I've been joined now by an APC member and a youth leader, particularly in the north central region of Nigeria. I'm talking about Mr. Musa Maman Kwantagora. He joins me now to do justice to the matter. Good afternoon and welcome to the program. Good afternoon. It's good to have you. Thank you. All right, um, let's start from um, the issue of poverty alleviation and where we stand. Uh, I'm sure it's no news to you, uh, the MBS report which came out the other day about the number of Nigerians who are living in multidimensional poverty, millions, over 120 million, I, I believe. And now we have um, someone new at the helm of affairs. I'd like to get your thoughts first of all, you know, what um, level or at what level do you think Nigeria currently is and where do you think we need to be? Uh, first and foremost, I, I want to appreciate you for giving me this privilege to partake in this interview. And uh, I believe better Edu as a person that can be able to deliver when she was a national woman leader of the party or before becoming the national woman leader of the party. She hold position at the state level uh, up to the co being the commissioner of health in her states. And uh, being her appointed as the minister of humanitarian, we have seen a lot of activities she has partake. She visited Borno State, the, which is uh, one of the states that has insurgency. She went to those camps. She flagged up uh, some activities in collaboration with the United Nations. And uh, she keep on pushing uh, in advising that this is not the activity that the, the federal government can do alone. Traditional rulers, the state government should, should join hands together in order to find a way that all these uh, can come to end. And most especially in the, in the issue of poverty alleviation, she flagged up a campaign, which the campaign has, she has started with at least two states, Borno and Niger. She went to Niger, she flagged up the, the poverty allevi alleviation scheme by treating those that are in the camps and she advised that the government should do all it takes in order to what to bring those back those people back to their locations in order to continue with their activities well in all what is needed is that the government need to give her full support traditional rulers the citizens of nigeria need to give her full support because this is a person that can be able to deliver you get uh, i think uh, that is what i have to say to for now on the issue of uh, better edu being the minister of humanitarian all right um that's fair enough um i guess the question when you speak about antecedents and uh, there might be some worries as to um you know a pass with um cross in cross river pardon me particularly with the issue of covid 19 and how at the time the governor uh, tried to you know, portray this um, idea that it did not exist and um, it's believed that persons like Dr. Better were, you know, instrumental to that belief. But that being said, uh, there were also talks that she could end up Minister of State for Health because she's a doctor and so on and so forth. So the question is, uh, do you think this is um, a square peg in a square hole or do you think she has been put in a ministry that might not, uh, she might not have as much uh, experience or antecedents to handle? Well, to me, being appointed as a Minister of Humanitarian, oh. I, to me, that is the best she can, 
that is the best place she can be able to to assist the president not health not health because also humanitarian deals with health you've been able to to bring out suggestion in order to what to find solution in those that are living in in abject poverty you understand those that are facing a lot of challenges in time of health in time of uh social amenities and a lot of things mm. which i believe she has the capacity to do that mm. because she's a person that i use that I usually love to be active she's a really she's a resilient uh, uh doctor mm. which by her activities you might be seen online you will know that better edu is a is a person that can that is being capable of to handle the affairs of the ministry of humanitarian well in a lot of her speech she delivered i believe uh, uh nigerians have seen it that what nigeria what we need now in nigeria is people that are sincere you understand people that are ready to go to the field not only saying it written you understand mm. not only giving press release but no the full activities you understand and i believe it has not been yet she has not uh, as, uh, spent up to 100 days in office and she has come up with a lot of engagement you understand that really tells who better edu is that really tells she is capable of holding the ministry of humanitarian and poverty alleviation all right but let's talk about the issues nigeria has currently um before we delve into perhaps how um, uh, madam beta edu can even fix them what's your take on what we're experiencing the reason um, why, why humanitarian affairs might even need more attention is because there is need for more humanitarian um, um you know actions particularly when we see a lot of people being displaced we see agencies under this mi ministry, such as FEMA, NEMA, and all the ones in all the states, they're constantly having to deal with um, one disaster or another. Before we talk about the natural disaster, let's talk about the ones that are, uh, for lack of a better word, man-made, in terms of insecurity and where people end up displaced. Um, how do you think um, you know, the country can really start to move forward in terms of um, uh, getting these people back and um, while taking into account some things that the government does, particularly the past government, where they would uh, forgive certain uh, perpetrators and all that, do you think that is still the way forward this time around? Well, the first thing she did was to meet with uh, law enforcement agencies like the army, the police, you understand, the school defense. She has meeting with them mm. in order to come and collaborate. This is what she can do alone. She has to collaborate with the law enforcement agency. And those that are found wanting in all these uh, 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 illegal activities, you understand? I think the government should come with skill acquisitions for them. You get? They may be forgiven, but they need to have what they will depend on. But do you think it's fair to the victims that the people who hurt them and ruin their lives get to have good lives while they are still in? uh internally displaced um, camps and all that he, i i said it initially that she tried to come up with a way that those people at the idp camps should find a way of going back to their various destinations various homes which she has met with the law enforcement agency agencies she uh she she discussed with them on what are the aspects that can be brought in order to see that a lot of achievement and a lot of development are putting in place in those places you understand those that have caused havoc you understand they need to be forgiven they need to be put into place lots of punishments i don't think the government can punish why not why Isn't that their job uh, justice you live to me in this case you understand you need to let them understand that we are one you get Without punishing them, without punishing them, I believe they also what they also feel that pain what that about, they have caused. What about you and I that have not caused pain? Seeing that people who have caused pain are not being punished, don't you think it encourages us to also cause pain because we know nothing will happen? Of course, to me, you get to me those people that are found wanting. Mm. You get, you understand me. The only way they can be punished is give them what they can do you get 
a lot of these youth that are found wanting in time of criminal activities many of them their reason is what they are they are like they are liking what to do maybe lack of unemployment and other things you get you understand you understand me so the government and traditional rulers everybody needs to come together in order to watch to end this but herself as a minister of humanitarian she's bringing up a new campaign you understand and that campaign is what try and fix things in order trying and fix things in order means that those people that are in idp camps there are a lot of those places that have been in peace now they should try and find a way of taking them back to their homes with security you understand me you understand a lot of states have gotten peace those that are in camp should have a way of going back to their own homes to their own various destination you understand mm -hmm. that is the, the it, it will be taken step by step this is the step that it needed to be taken now is what let us find a way of what of bringing peace that is the first step that she's trying to take all right um still on humanitarian affairs uh we know the the name of the ministry has some kind of changed it used to be ministry of humanitarian affairs and disaster management and social development or thereabouts now it's the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Uh, and now social welfare has now been taken to health, where we have Professor Ali Pate presiding as a coordinating minister. Um, that aside, whatever that might imply on how the ministry will work, we'll get to that. Let's talk now about um, an issue. We, we actually mentioned it off air. Uh, we can't talk about the ministry without talking about what has happened in the past. And a lot of people believe or feel as though um you know there were certain unfinished business or incomplete projects that we didn't really see to fruition and there were some that were seen to be working but uh, uh, is believed to have had some level of fraud or the other allegedly now we have the minister of humanitarian affairs and poverty education dr better had said that there are plans on their way to rejig some of these schemes such as the empower scheme to accommodate more people and ensure prompt payment of beneficiaries stipends that is what she said in a statement by her special advisor she also mentioned that they're working on a new register that will enable this work um, better uh, as regards other issues whenever it regards you know extending welfare to nigerians so the question now is what do you think was or did not work with empower in the past and what do you think will be different this time around uh to me what it what is needed in all this is what is let us deal with what is the most important thing i think as she said the record of every state is needed mm. that is what is supposed to be done you understand me if if uh making an instance i have been appointed in order to control a certain fierce of that of that uh, of maybe the empower in a particular state you understand i am supposed to bring to to come to the round table with the ministers and other colleagues to to give a breakdown of what's happening you understand to give a breakdown of this is the activities that I have been able to carry out for a particular period of time so that what the mistakes that have been made will be adjusted the corrections that need to be corrected will be corrected you understand me i believe this time that is what is going to be done it is going to be an open discussion between the minister and all those that will be in charge of the empower and other activities of the humanitarian you understand me it will not be the normal business that it will it will be something that is being blocked from the from the uh, from the from the people to know what is happening it will be different because what we need sincerity we need transparency we need accountability you understand and i believe better edu is in best place in order to carry out this uh, this tax ahead of her all right let's talk about again just quickly on our antecedents before we move over we spoke about her being the apc um uh, woman leader what lessons do you think she learned from there? And also, do you think there are concerns that being a party woman it might affect her in certain ways? Take, for instance, there was a trending video the other day where some, some lady 
you know, was displaying, you know, a bunch of dollar notes saying that the minister, the now minister had visited and, you know, just, uh, but then uh, there's no, um, um, what's the word, there's no crime against giving um, funds or, or such to anybody. But then there were dollars and that's quite a lot of money. But that aside, do you think she learned the right lessons and do you think perhaps people might be worried that as a party woman, you know, she might take some other lessons that come with party politics into a new position. I believe she has learned a lesson because those people that are found in those videos are mm. no more even working with her. Mm. That was then the party affairs. Did they do anything wrong? That was then to me. That was then because I'm not aware of the video, but I, I saw it in a, in a in a clip, and that is not needed. Mm. That was then the party affairs. This is Nigerian affairs mm. that deals with whether APC, PDP, we're talking of Nigerian affairs now. Are you sure she can? She it? can mm. because she has learned a lesson over what has happened. You understand? And her being a national woman leader of the party, I believe she has moved around. She has rallied around during the time of campaign. She has made her own conservation con uh, interaction with a lot of people. But what is here now this is nigerian issue you understand and i believe better it will have taken the right step by what those that will be able to work with her she is going to get people that are resilient people that are vibrant you understand me because this is not a party affairs anymore it is a national affairs you understand me so that part of what has happened at the past should not be involved into the present you understand and I believe she is the best person for this job. Why? Because she's a person that loves interacting with people. If you might see a lot of her, her videos, she loves going around to what? To interact with a lot of people, which I, I believe now she's going to come up, come out with a lot of innovations, a lot of ways in order to interact. Speaking of innovations, she, she has reached out for support from um to international organizations like the bill and Mend melinda gates um foundation Conditions. um do you think it's a step in the right direction is, a, is she's stepping in the right direction mm. because when you are talking of what uh, are reducing poverty in nigeria is not only about food you understand mm. to reduce poverty we need to have medicine in different hospitals you understand we need to have with the youth will be engaged. You understand? We need to bring ways that the women, we have something doing, as she said it in Niger State, that these women should have what they will rely on, not only relying on the government, not only relying on their husband, they should have something doing. You and do you get me? So she brought an instance of, if a woman should be given a gallon of granite oil, she can sell it to what? To have a means of livelihood. You, under, you understand me? I believe her meeting the, uh, the other foundations that she has sat down with, it is a way of bringing up new ideas that we, that we would bring development into the Ministry of Humanitarian and in order to reduce poverty and other, and other things that will bring development to the ministry. All right, that's fair enough. I'm um, reaching out to these um, organizations. One might wonder if they would want some level of payback, you know, uh, for these um, humanitarian affairs. Uh, but that being said, uh, like um, uh, Dr. Beta said, about 16 million Nigerians are suffering from humanitarian issues and thereabouts. How do you think they can now begin to be better preparations for natural disasters, um, you know, things that we don't plan for? Take, for instance, um, in um, currently in, um, in Abuja, uh, there is the Trade More Estates. Every other year, we have floods there. Sometimes it leads to death of people, destruction of properties and of, of um, properties, pardon me, and so on and so forth. So, uh, the question is, what do you think um, is the scope of the ministry enough to handle these issues? Is it really up to, or let me put it this way, the, minist the ministry of humanitarian affairs usually has to come in after some level of quote unquote damage has been done. Are there ways to forestall these things so that you don't just come and have to rescue Nigerians from different humanitarian issues, but you prevent it? 
You know, if you're talking of the issue of these disasters, mm. it's not only the Ministry of Humanitarian that should be involved. Mm. We have the Ministry of Environment, you understand? We have, uh, the government itself need to be involved. You get? Mm. I believe there is a town plan of every, uh, 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 of every area or you've been, you want to construct an estate, there's a town plan. You understand? If we enough are being able to work to follow the right direction, to follow the right step, you understand? Mm. I believe we are going to have a reduction of all those uh, damages that have been happening. But coming up to the involvement of Ministry of Humanitarian, let the blame not be taken to the ministry in all. Because what? We are not praying for every for damage to happen. But if the damage happen, the Ministry of Humanitarian, the best thing they should do is what to advise. Or even before it happens, advise by meeting, having in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment, having collaboration with the Ministry of Housing. You understand? Because that those are the people that are fully responsible of all those uh, issues not to humanitarian humanitarian come in in the place of what the damage has happened to render service of what of help to those that have been affected you understand but in this issue the ministry of housing the ministry of environment should come together in place in order to what to find out some major solu solutions that should be done in order to reduce the loss of life in time of what uh flood and other things well fair enough um, we watch and wait and hope that nigerians are a little bit more proactive like you said the ministries need to work together uh so we still have um, a few more questions on um uh, dr edu before we move over to the issue of youths and youth affairs let's talk about poverty elevation um i want to be sure to get the quotes directly but dr better edu spoke about um you know job creation and how uh, the administration would end up creating uh, many jobs to kind of tackle the issue of of um, poverty. Is it something that is within our power to create jobs? Mm, of course, is is within her power. You know, when you say creation of jobs, then they must not be white collar jobs. Mm. You understand? To me. The best thing the ministry should do is what? In every state, there should be skill acquisition center. In every state, there should be skill acquisition center. In that center, they should have different department, most especially the youth. We wear clothes every day. You understand? We wear shoes every day. This, the ministry should try and what? And come up with ideas, come up with solutions to have people that have uh, people that have that trained mindset in order to what uh, to train the youth you understand in terms of women there are a lot of ways they should be trained so having those skills acquisition center in every state you have created jobs you understand mm. and also in time of empowerment when the government want to empower i believe it is the duty of ministry of humanitarian that have the data of all those uh, of all those needed in the state to what to to have a means of allocating those uh, uh, empowered soft loans to all the citizens across i think there also you have reduced the likes of unemployment you understand and you have engaged people into jobs to keep people busy mm. that's fair enough and like i say an idle man is the devil's workshop, workshop so uh, it's best to keep busy about um we're still speaking on humanitarian affairs of poverty alleviation uh recently uh, an nbs statistic was released where it showed that nigeria is now apparently 4.1 percent or has 4.1 percent um, unemployment rate and this was done because of certain changes in the me methodology where he said persons who work, work just a, a certain amount of hours within a week are considered to be employed so the question is, do you think such helps Nigerians if we don't have the true picture of things? Or does it mean 4.1% is unemployment rate and everything is good now? 
uh, to me in term of pro, pro, uh, in term of what production of uh, in term of the government giving jobs this is not what the government can do alone mm. you understand there should be a uh, privatization of the economy you understand mm, the government this is something that um, your party have actually you know your party somehow has kicked against issues of privatization I recall whenever the issues came up with the uh, the refineries, you know, with the PDP presidential candidate, who always talks that he just wants to sell it to his friends and so on and so forth. Do you think privatization is something to be considered in this administration? Of course, when I talk of privatization, mm. it must not be in terms of uh, in terms of refineries. This is privatization in terms of what. We have a lot of companies that are dumped that are not working. You understand? Mm. Like the Kaduna assembly, the, the car uh, company for assembling of cars in Kaduna. You understand? There are a lot of companies that have that potential, that have those capacity to make them work again. Mm. You understand? The, governor sh the government should bring in those eligible companies that have all it takes in order to, wake, to make that company move. You understand? Like the steel company in Ajakuta, all these things. You still believe that that can be revived? It can be revived because all those but things so are what. So much money has already gone into all it. Those so things, results. All those things are what are things that will that will reduce unemployment. Take a take example in time of road construction. When a be, when a road construction is being carried on in a state, you see that a lot of youth are being engaged. You understand? Mm. A lot of youth will be, will be engaged in, in the road construction. They will earn an, a lot of money. You understand? So, the government should give a, a lot of, should give benefit of doubt to a lot of foreign investors to come in. But the foreign investors should have what? A role map that this is what they are to look into. You understand me? You get? Mm. Because... Uh, the government of Nigeria need to work to partner with a lot of bodies in order to work to bring the reduction of unemployment because we Nigerians we believe in white collar job mm. which is which is very very wrong we shouldn't rely on white collar job we should rely on other jobs that will uh, make us to be independent all right that's fair enough um right now let, we'll go on a short break I would, I would like to take you up on the issue of white collar jobs and what the alternative really is uh, so that that will um, continue our conversation after we return from this uh, very quick break. Stay with us. <laughs> 